Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, that's great. Okay, I'm delighted that there's still people here because uh, it's quite late on Friday afternoon and the weather is beautiful outside, but I'm glad you choose to come here. So I'll try to uh, guide you through some of the basics in Android Wear. It's an exciting new platform just released uh, last year, and it might be uh, somebody who wants to uh, get started but don't really know how, so um, I hope you can use this talk. First of all, how many people has a smartwatch here? Can you raise your hand? Okay, quite a few. How many people has actually made a, an app for a smartwatch? Ah, okay. Well, this is for beginners only, so but you know, you're welcome to stay, of course. So a bit about me, I'll do it fast. Um, well, I started in mobile back in a galaxy far, far away called Java Micro Edition. Uh, well, a long time ago. Unfortunately, we uh, improved a lot in the industry, and well, we have uh, iOS and of course Android. These days, um, in the academic world, I'm teaching basic computer science, uh, you know, your standard graph algorithms and tree algorithms and this stuff in a local college in Denmark. Well, nobody knows the town, but it's about one hour away from Legoland. So if you're in the vicinity, come visit. It's a nice place. And we have quite a good IT community there as well. Uh, and I teach one Android course, which is, of course, my favorite. So it's a full semester course, and normally we teach just, let's say, normal phone and tablet Android but we want to introduce uh, Android Wear, of course, in, in, in this course as well for a few weeks. Uh, normally the problem for students, uh, and maybe also many beginners, is actually that, yes, you can find a lot of online material uh, on Google, like code snippets here and there, how to do a, con a confirmation dialogue, how to do a list view, but putting everything together is often a, a bit challenging for, for students. So I'll show you one uh, sample app that demonstrates a lot of these things. Uh, first, actually, I want to... I just wanted to show you some, uh, like what is, what is out there, you know, the creativity is, is actually huge. So just two of my favorite ones for wear. Um, this was the first one I downloaded, Space Invader for Android Wear. Uh, I don't know who made this, it's not an affiliate to me, but you know, you have a lot of games out there. You have a lot of cool watch faces also these days. Uh, here's an interesting one, I actually met the people who made this at the welcome party here. Uh, it's like a, a beer o'clock. Watch face, uh, yeah, when it's five o'clock you can drink beer. So a lot of creativity out there, I have to say. So my talk, uh, basically just a brief intro to Android Wear and uh, what is my uh, sample app here about. And then, you know, we'll go to the code into Android Studio, look at some of how the XML is done and, and the code, and hopefully uh, we can manage to do quite a bit. All the code is on GitHub. Uh, it's, it's this uh, address will be on all the slides and also the last slide. You see the GitHub address. There's also a few. Another Wear project. If you're interested in doing like uh, full screen custom graphics apps on Wear, like games, I have an example on GitHub as well how to do that. Uh, it's a bit different than doing standard Wear UI. So feel welcome to have a look at that as, as well. Then uh, a few conclusions and some um, you know, advice for people who want to get started uh, on Android Wear. And hopefully you'll have some time for a few questions before the closing ceremony. So the Wear platform, uh, basically just running a, a, a watch version of Android. Uh, there's some things you can do on normal Android, it's not possible on Wear, and some things uh, vice versa, but we'll get into that later. Uh, so old watches, well, I have a Moto 360 here, it's already pretty old, first gen. Uh, so it needs to be connected to my phone uh, via Bluetooth, uh, but n newer ones can, can, can use Wi-Fi uh, uh, for, for connectivity. So the main idea from Google is that the watch should be showing relevant data uh, at relevant time uh, by cards or notifications. Um, you can also, of course, have standalone apps like the Space Invader uh, one. Uh, well, this relevant is, of course, uh, uh, a challenge. Um, now, a lot of uh, the big companies, I think, uh, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn have a, like a Wear component for the Android app, so you get uh, some special notifications uh, on your app here. As a developer, uh, if you want to release uh, a Wear component or a standalone Wear app like a game, well, it still needs to be packaged inside uh, a normal phone app. There's no special Play Store where you can download Wear apps. 
so it needs to be packaged into that. And I have a project as well on GitHub. You can look on how to, how to do this packaging inside. There's several different ways to, uh, to do that. Uh, so just be aware, of, be aware of that. So you actually need to have two apps, like a phone and, and a Wear app, and then combine them into one. Just to show you a bit of about how is the UI on Android Wear. So these are some examples from Google. I have some custom ones a bit later. Uh, there's quite a few more than these, but basically you have cards, which can also show uh, an action. So in this case, it's a music player. And there's a, you see a pause uh, button on, on this action card. You can have uh, lists. That's a, sparrow, uh, that's a special variable uh, list uh, class for this. It's not, it's not the normal list view. And one thing you probably already noticed here is, well, the screen is really small. You only have three items here in your list. And this is, the, of course, the challenge on where the, the screen is really small. I think on, on the Mojo, it's like 1.65 inches. Uh, in pixels, it's about 320 pixels by uh, 290, I think, around that uh, area. So we're almost back into the old VGA standard, 320 by 200. So, so the, but of course, the density is higher. Also, you have uh, like confirmations. You can show to the user that okay, we uh, sent a message or, or we uh, did, did some other things. Um, and, and there's a lot more of these special wear uh, UI. Okay, so the app I'm just presenting here is for I made it for educational purposes. Uh, so it's not a commercial project. And that, that's why if uh, Jana, who did the keynote uh, the first day, if she was here, she would kill me for the UI, because it's not meant to be like a commercial one. It's just to show different, oh, sorry, just to show different uh, ways of doing the UI. So I have, you know, buttons in different styles, and I have dialogues in different styles. Uh, so please, uh, it's for educational purposes. I wanted to include as much uh, code as possible for uh, students uh, or, and new people into Android Wear. So actually, this uh, was born out of uh, you know uh, a critical need to examine what kind of food did we get in our local canteen, and uh, yeah, there was a hypothesis that we get too much chicken. So of course, we need to make an app for that. Uh, you know, we need to be data driven. So I, I made an app for that, uh, just for my own purposes and educational ones. And here, actually, there was a real use case. Uh, I, I don't think I've seen like a, a killer app yet for, for, for Wear. Of course, there's nice apps, but you can certainly live uh, without a Space Invader, or you can live without the beer o'clock. Uh, so I, don't, I haven't really found a killer app uh, yet, but I hope some guys here will make it in the future. So the, the use case for me was that actually, you know, not always carrying the phone around. And this might be something you can consider. Is there some places or where people normally don't carry the phones these days? It's getting, <laughs> I know, uh, less and less. People carry the phones to the toilets, uh, in the bed, whatever. But uh, this could be something you could think about. And for me, you know, I always leave my, my phone uh, at the office just um, charging. So. Just to show you some of the UI here, uh, I have it running also in an emulator. Uh, it's probably uh, easier to, to show in the emulator. I have, uh, yeah, a big version here of the emulator. I have a smaller one as well, but I think we go with the big one. So basically, you have your list view here. You know, what did you have for lunch? Well, OK, it's pretty simple, but let's say that I have pork. Uh, I, I click, and you know it's a bit slow, the emulator here, uh, but on RealBot, it's quite fast. Then I can slide, you know, and I can see my statistics from the other days, you know, just to have another screen, just to show how to do multi-screen in Android Wear. These are called pages. Uh, we'll get back to the code for, for how to do that. You'll notice in the bottom, there's like a, a, an indicator here. It's called a dot page indicator. I think it's really nice to include that for your users to see what, what screen are you on. Uh, if I go here, um, well, you know, maybe uh, if I was in Australia for a visit or something, maybe I wanted to put kangaroo on the menu. It's not one of the predefined choices. And here we run into a challenge on where, how to do input. Obviously, keyboard input is a no-go. <laughs> you can't really type uh, on the where, so that's why we have speech uh, input. And that I wanted to demonstrate in, in the app as well. 
If you want to test it on the emulator, uh, I won't do it because, it, well, it doesn't work. Speech input, you have to type in, so it's not so much fun. Uh, but it works here, and I can, you know, add whatever new stuff I want to my list. Well, then there's some reset buttons to reset the stuff. And here, I just wanted to show the dialogues, uh, you notice. So here, these buttons here are just standard Android UI. If you don't do anything to the button, they're rendered like this. Well, maybe it's pretty boring, but of course you can style your buttons exactly as you do on normal Android to get something specific for your application. Uh, you have also dialogues. Let's say I press this reset stats. Uh, this is actually a normal alert dialogue. Uh, it works exactly as on normal Android and is rendered like, uh, like this. Of course, you can choose the text. Um, yeah, but that's how it's rendered. You probably want to do your own dialogues uh, at some point, maybe a bit, let's say, rare like, uh, maybe something like this, a bit more graphic, uh, graphical uh, as well. So I, that's also in the code. OK, I think uh, that's enough for the demo. Let's, uh, let's move a bit on. Um, so well, these we have already looked at. So let's move on. So actually, this is a pretty simple app. But you know, there's a lot of rare specific things and how to get everything up and running. Here's just a small list of uh, some of these things that this app demonstrates. Uh, well, there's of course also a database, SQL database, uh, that works exactly as you would expect. And there's a lot of other stuff. OK, let's uh, look at some code. And I can just show a few highlights uh, because of time. But everything is on GitHub. Is it big enough? Bigger? No? I don't know. I'll just put it up a bit bigger, maybe. Yeah. OK, anyway. Um, so this is the manifest file. Uh, so just a few things I want to point out here. So yeah, we have this. Uh, hardware feature. Of course, we need to have a, a watch uh, for that, so you want to include that in your manifest. You also want to include any classes you use. Uh, and here I use one class from the support library, the variable support library. Uh, confirmation activities, those were the ones you saw with the one button saying, uh, uh, or, or the one icon saying uh, message sent. Uh, so yeah, those you also want to include uh, as well. Uh, all right, let's go into the main activity, just to show the XML. Here are three important classes. Uh, yeah, you'll notice that it's actually rendered as empty uh, because it includes other pages. So you can use uh, what is called a box insert uh, layout if you want to have kind of this, well, the same UI on both a round and a square device. If you want to have a completely separate UI on round and square, there's also uh, another class called uh, what's view stop uh, you can use for that. I have that on my, uh, my other project on GitHub, if you want to look into that. Here I have the same UI for round and square devices. So I use that. It, ne it needs to be in your root uh, hierarchy, otherwise it won't work. Then there's the grid view pager. And this is for if you want to have several screens in your uh, variable app, uh, you put that in as well. And finally, we have the dots page indicator to get the dots uh, on the bottom. And you can, uh, you can also decide to put them on top or wherever you want. Uh, so there's a lot of options here. OK, let's try to go into, uh, let's say, the select one, just one of them. So you will notice that, so this is the XML for the, the first screen where I can select uh, what did I have for lunch. And uh, those are all frame layouts. So each screen is actually a frame. Uh, so you can use uh, the standard uh, frame manager, et cetera, for, for, for that. So it's defined as a frame layout. And here you have a special list view. If I just show it here. Uh, here, this is from the variable support library. So this is the variable list view. Uh, and of course, you need to define how will your children uh, of this view uh, look like. You, you can do that in another file. 
I have it here just to show you. So basically you can do anything in there. So this is a variable list item layout class. And in my example here, well, basically I have an image view, which was the blue circle you saw. So that is defined here as a drawable. And then I have the text view, which of course depends on what is in the database. Uh, you can do you know, anything you want uh, in here. So that's, this, that's the layout. Okay, let's uh, just look uh, uh, briefly at how to do this grid paging, how to have several pages. So basically, you need to have an adapter. And this is uh, in where as well. It's called Fragment Grid Pager Adapter. If you can see it in the end here, you need to extend that. And then you need to override three methods to determine what should be on each of those screens. So I have four fragments uh, as well here for each of you know, my, my screens. But let's go to these methods you have to override. So this is the most important one. Uh, this is called get fragment. And this is called by the system. Uh, so you will notice actually here the two parameters. There's like a row and a column. So this means you can do a, a layout page in, in 2D. So you can also scroll horizontally if you want. Here I just have a one dimensional one. So I'm just looking at the column. So the column one is of course the first screen, then I return my menu fragment. Uh, color, uh, the column uh, one is like the stats fragment and the, 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 the second one is the speech fragment and then this clear fragment at the end. So that's how basically how you, how you do it. Um, yeah, and then you need also to return uh, what is your row count. I just have one row here and you need to return what is your column count. Of course, if you do something in 2D, the column count uh, will depend on the row number. So this can be dynamically. Uh, that's why there's one parameter, uh, parameter here. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I have, uh, of course, a lot of code I want to show. Um, I just, the final one, because time is running, uh, just a speech fragment. How to use the speech recognizer on, on where. Yeah, so I have a method here, which this is basically just pretty much copied from, uh, from Google. There's a, a pretty good example from that. So to display a speech recognizer, you just start a new intent and you can specify your language model here, or I'm not an expert on those, I just use the standard ones. And then basically you start your, uh, your, your intent and wait for the result. And I have the code for uh, the result, yeah, here. So first, of course, you want to check uh, if everything went okay. You know, did we get a, was it also from the speech code? Then you can go in and get uh, the result uh, data here. So I just want to get uh, the first word. I only allow my, my users or myself to just speak one word for the menu. That is why you see a zero here, just get the first word, but of course you can get the whole sentence and then you can try to react on that. Uh, the speech recognizer is pretty good, uh, it's not perfect. Yeah, I think that's what I can manage to show you. Uh, all the code is on GitHub and uh, I, you know, if you want to use it for whatever you want, uh, yeah, okay. So just the final uh, conclusions and then maybe just a few questions. Yeah, okay, if you want to debug, uh, you can look at this slide later, but basically debugging on Android Wear is a bit different than normally. You need to do it by uh, USB, uh, so, sorry, by um, Bluetooth. Conclusions, I think the APIs are pretty good, uh, but you know, it's subject to change. Uh, that is at least what it says in the documentation. Most of the Android standard uh, stuff is available, alert dialog, buttons, et cetera, et cetera. Some things, of course, doesn't work. Uh, action bar, just to mention one. Uh, about the emulator, uh, you can't trust it 100%. I found bugs in API level uh, 21 of the round emulator. It didn't correctly render the stuff. This was removed. Uh, this, this works now in the API level 22 round emulator, so use the newest emulator version, uh, or use a real uh, watch as well, of course. And yes, we do get a lot of chicken. Okay, thank you.